Hello my lovelies, welcome back to Crazy But Not Dangerous. I'm Shorty Vaughn and Andrew has requested hot food today. I have fed him for the last three days salads, sandwiches, wraps, all the good things, but today he wants hot food. Well, hot diggity, let's go ahead and get down to it. Um, I'm going to be making Schweine Schnitzel and that's different than Wiener Schnitzel, which is typically prepared with veal. So I am going to be pre preparing my schnitzel with pork, which is more traditional um, in Germany. So what I want to do first is make my side dish because the schnitzel will prepare very fast and is best right from the skillet to the plate to the mouth. So I want to make sure that I have everything in place so that I can prepare everything get my plates all ready, and then just go ahead and lay on those delicious crispy pork cutlets. I'm really happy about tonight's dinner. And you think, and you think it, like it's a little hot. It's a little bit hot to make in schnitzel, but these fry so quickly that it won't even have time to heat up your house. And my side dish is going to be braised cabbage, which I'm gonna cook in the East Bake oven. So also, keeping the heat low, keeping the electricity down, and we're having kind of a cooler day today. It's only 93. Yeah, right. Let's get down to it. Got this great looking cabbage over at the 99 cents only store. It's 99 cents. And look, it's hardly discolored at all. This is a really good, firm, fresh one. I was super thrilled to get it for 99 cents also have this little bit of a baking dish because I'm not going to be making a ton of braised cabbage today but I did feel like braised cabbage would go well with the schnitzel and then also like it's not another fried food um you know cabbage is really good for you so I thought it would kind of counteract all that fried I don't fry very often and Andrew would love it if I fried every day. That's not going to happen. Poor boy. That's not going to happen. So I am just going to go ahead and take the most delicious sides off of this cabbage, leaving me with a little bit of the core. I'm going to do something else with this later on in the week. And it will be delicious. And then I am just going to give these... Just a little, just a little quarter. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess around with it. And they are gonna braise for about 45 minutes in the easy bake oven. It'll be totally delicious and tender. Here we go. All righty. Looks good to me also have about one half cup of water here and I have a little bit of chicken um, better than bouillon. I'm getting low. I bought this over at the Peoria Discount Grocery and um, I got it for $1.99 and then I saw what price it was in the store. So I'm really hoping they've got some more better than bouillon when I go back to the, uh, to the Peoria Discount Grocery. So I've got, oh, about one teaspoon in there, and I'm just going to go ahead and incorporate that all in there as much as possible. And then I am also going to go ahead and add yellow mustard, any kind of mustard would do. This is just, I reached in, that was the first mustard that jumped at them. You're the winner today, baby. So I am going to put about two good teaspoons in there. Stir that up. I love mustard with my um, cabbage. I just think it's terrific. Got some granulated garlic, probably from Gilroy. Hello Gilroy if you're watching. And I'm just going to give that all a little liberal sprinkling. You got it. It'll be fun. Because I'm using that bouillon and it has some salt in it, I am going to add 
plenty of pepper in here. And then just a couple of, just a couple of, uh, you know, choice of the salt because I don't want my cabbage to be over salted. That's for sure. I don't want swollen feet tomorrow. Or I don't want to have to get up in the middle of the night for 20 drinks of water and then spend all my night running back and forth to the bathroom. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay. This is pretty well incorporated. Smells fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and just pour that right on in there. And it is not quite covering the cabbage. It's not taking a swim. Just a little wave, and that is perfectly okay by me. Yeah, just a little wave, because as this cabbage cooks, it will also let off some of its own, you know, liquid, and this will break down, and it will be delicious. For richness, I'm just going to put about one tablespoon of butter right in here. There we go. And I'm going to put this in the easy bake oven at 400 degrees for the first 15 minutes, uncovered. And then I'm going to turn it down to about 300 degrees and let it go for the next half hour at that, at that temperature. And this will be all delicious. Show you what it looks like when it comes out. Now, of course, if you're going to all the trouble to make schnitzel, you could always make a spatzel to go with it. I don't make it. It's just one of those things I don't make. I'm just, yeah. But it is not uncommon in Germany to have palms or french fries with your, with your schnitzel. So that's what we're going to have today. I'm also going to put those in the easy bake oven right alongside my cabbage. They can keep each other company. And I got these steak fries over at the dollar store. Um, Dollar treat, they were a dollar twenty-five, and there is fourteen ounces in here. I'm having a difficult time sourcing potato products at my regular stores, but for some reason, Dollar Tree always comes through for me with these French fries, and I do like the steak cut. Now they're a little stuck together, so you know, I'm just gonna give them a little bash right there. Make sure that they're all individualized and what have you, day right? These will also cook at 400 degrees, and I do want these to get crispy and delicious, so I'm going to put them out on this tray, and then what I do is take a little bit of vegetable oil, not much, and I'm just going to go ahead and give these a very light drizzle so that they can be the crunchiest, best selves. Yep, just a little light drizzle. And then, you know, maybe I'll take some tongs and just roll them all around. Make sure that they're coated. That was maybe a tablespoon of oil, a tablespoon and a half. But yeah, just a, just a drizzle. Just like, you know, not a swim, not a wave, but maybe somebody squirted you with a hose. Here you go. And then, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and give them a good liberal amount of salt because potatoes can take it. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and get these right on in, right um, next to the next shelf down with the with the cabbage they can yeah two for one can't beat that okay like i said successful schnitzel preparedness is the name of the game absolutely so i've got just some plain breadcrumbs here um that have been toasted but they are unseasoned and i'm not gonna season them i'm gonna leave them just the way that they are and I'll explain why. And I have some regular all-purpose flour, about a cup. But this is also, this one's going to need seasonings. 
so I've got the garlic still out here and a teaspoon. I'm going to put a teaspoon of garlic. Well, that didn't work. Take the lid off. There we go. I'm going to put a teaspoon of garlic into my flour. That seems like a lot. It'll be okay. If you like less, put less. It's your, schn it, it's your schnitzel. Make it any way you want. This is just a jumping outcome. All the recipes should be reflections of how your family enjoys eating flavors that you enjoy. You know, maybe you make schnitzel a different way. How about it? Got a teaspoon of um, paprika. Hello. There we go. Got a teaspoon of papri paprika. This is smoked. This is my preference. If you like a sweet paprika, go for it. Go for it. Absolutely. All right. It's going to need a few turns of pepper. And I am pretty generous with the pepper. We do enjoy it a lot. And a few turns of the salt as well. Here we go. And then I'm just going to grab a whisk and just give these a little stir up right here on this plate. If you wanted to add any other seasoning, maybe you have onion powder, maybe, maybe there's something that you'd like to add to it, go for it. Have at it. Alright, if those all incorporated, we're gonna need a couple eggs. Okay, I think it's probably gonna take about two eggs. I'm gonna go ahead and crack these babies right in here. And so this is going to be a three-part breading process. eggs both delicious so for me I can always tell if an egg is really good and delicious if the yolk sits really high on top of the white when when I crack it open that's what my mom did that's what my grandma did my mother did not make schnitzel um, she made fried pork chops with gravy mashed potatoes this Sometimes beans on the side, some pintos. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. And right now, it seems like every time I go to the grocery store, the only meat that's really affordable, pork. Yeah. I'm gonna get my pork chops out next and get those all ready too. All right, these are my pork chops. Got them over at the Albertsons. 30% off. Can't beat, any, can't beat that with a stick. These are less than one-fourth thick. They are exactly what I need for schnitzel. Um, they were $7.97, 30% off. Would make them like $5.80. I think this is a good bargain. And I won't have to pound them out. Now, if you have in your freezer or if you go to the grocery store and they only have a thicker cut pork chop what you would do is go ahead and grab some plastic wrap and go ahead and cut quite a large sheet of plastic wrap lay it out on your counter and then go ahead and take your larger pork chop put it over to the side of the plastic wrap Fold the plastic wrap over. Then take your meat mallet. And you see how some sides have ridges and some sides are flat. With the flat side, go ahead and beat that pork chop from the center out. Yeah, from the middle of the pork chop out towards the sides to get that pork chop less than one-fourth inch thick. 
because we want these to cook really fast. This is gonna cook in like less than three, four minutes. It's in the pan, it's out of the pan, it's on its way to your belly really, really fast without heating up your kitchen. So yeah, pound it to about one fourth thick and then, you know, you're in. If you don't like doing it, get your kids to do it. Yeah, they would love to pound something. Pound it from the middle to the outside, you know, and kind of push it that way when you're pounding it so that you don't end up with a bunch of holes at the edge. If you do, you're gonna fry it. You're gonna coat it in all these delicious yum yums. You're gonna fry it up. It's gonna be terrific even if it has holes. Now let's say you just mangle it. That's okay, get your knife out. Make yourself the best looking cutlets that you can. Doesn't really matter. And then go ahead and bread those up just like we're gonna do here in a second. Nobody will know, nobody will care because these are crispy and delicious and just super scrumptious. So yeah, don't worry about it. And, it, and you know, even if you don't pound them out, even if you say, well, they're going in like they are. It's okay, it's gonna be fine. It'll be perfectly fine. You can even ask your butcher sometimes, hey, do you think you might be able to pound these thin for me? And if they're in a good mood and you have a decent relationship with your butcher, Sometimes go ahead and take them into the back, pound them thin, wrap them up for you, and still sell them for you as the price of the thick pork chops. Yeah, the guy over at my Albertsons, he's awesome. Okay, washed my hands. I've been handling the pork, the swine. Okay, I am going to go ahead and season these up right here in the package. Because I'm already doing four dishes. Not to mention, you know, our dinner dishes. So I'm not getting another, I'm not getting another um, plate out for these. So I'm going to go ahead and just, yeah, salt and pepper them right here in the little black tray. Make sure you don't put your, um, you know, meat diaper in there. That's, I don't understand those, but you know. The world's filled with mysteries. A little salt. A little pepper. Okay. Alrighty, we're getting there. I'm gonna go check on my fries and my cabbage, and then we're gonna get down to it. And fry up our schnitzel. So I have checked on my cabbage and my fries, my palms, because we're all fancy today with our with our um, German dish. And they still need a little bit of time. I also kind of want my pork cutlets to come to room temperature so they fry really fat fast all the way through, crispy on the outside and not burnt because, you know, Nobody likes burnt food, but if they come to room temperature, they will cook more evenly. So I'm just parking these here, just going to let them do what they do, and they will be just fine. In the meantime, I wanted to make a little sauce. So there is a schnitzel, Rom schnitzel, that has a lovely cream sauce that you serve with it. Um, there's lots of kinds of schnitzel, all kinds of things. Anyhow, they have, Ram Schnitzel has a cream sauce, and I wanted to put my own, you know, Sonoran kind of flair on it. So the other day, I bought this artichoke jalapeno dip over at the Smart and Final, and I'm actually going to use this to make my cream sauce. I know it sounds a little weird, crazy, but not dangerous. So I am just going to go ahead and take this, maybe it's a quarter of a cup of the artichoke jalapeno dip, maybe a little bit more just to, just for safety's sake. Yeah. And to that, I'm going to go ahead and add some whole milk to thin it out a little bit. 
You could use half and half. You could use heavy cream. I'm just going to add about a quarter cup of the whole milk just to thin it out a tad. Then I'm going to look at it, see what else it needs, see, see if I've added too much liquid. I think I added too much liquid. Okay, I'm going to add just a tad bit more of that jalapeno artichoke dip. Spinach dip would work just fine. You could make a cream sauce if you were so inclined. I'm, I, I wouldn't be mad at it. Absolutely. Use, use the bechamel. Use that bechamel cream sauce from the macaroni and cheese. That would be delicious. But this is going to be quick and easy and made in the microwave because I'm not turning one more thing on. It's not going to happen. Okay. So there we go. And it's creamy, somewhat thick. And then you've got a little jalapeno and a little artichoke in there too. It's going to be delicious. I'm going to go ahead and pop this into the microwave and get this warming because I want to see what the thickness is. Do I maybe need to add a little cornstarch slurry to it to thicken it? Won't know until it boils. Okay, so I nuked it up for two minutes and it is thick and coating the back of a spoon and I don't think it needs anything else. I think it looks really delicious. I'm super excited about this. Now, I personally am not going to pour this over my schnitzel because I love the crispiness of it, but I will put it in little tiny ramekins on the side and you are welcome to pour it over or you can just dip it. And um, yeah, I tasted this. This is amazing. And while not traditional, I think an interesting twist. So yeah, we're almost there. It's almost time for our frying. Got one more thing that I need to do. I have a little bit of a lemon here and I am just going to go ahead and cut a few wedges um, because that is very traditional to have a little lemon wedge on the side. Give it a little squeeze right over your fried little schnitzel cutlet and that will just really make that pop. It will be extra delicious. Um, I, you don't have to have it. It is certainly optional. Um, but I've got a little bit of lemon. Gave it a little, just, just you know, gave it a little chippity chop. However you cut your lemons. Gordon Ramsay is going to be so impressed by your schnitzel. He will not care about your knife cuts. I promise. Okay, so I have my electric skillet out and I want to test the level of the oil. So I think I have it just about right. It should be just about a half inch deep. So I'm going to stick my fork bottom into the handle, into the oil, and then I'm going to kind of use it as my dipstick. And you will see the little line right there. That's how deep it is. And I want to make sure that it's deep enough to cover my thickest cutlet. And it is. It is. That's exactly what I want. I want, I want these babies to go for a swim. My lovelies, if you are being impacted by the wildfires, just know that my heart goes out to you. And for your safety and well-being, you are in my prayers. If you're affected by the smoke and debris of the wildfire, I certainly know that one. Living in the West, it seems like most of our summer is either on fire watch or suffering from the smoke and what have you. As a young girl, my parents had like a summer cabin in our North Country, which is wooded Ponderosa and Pine. And, um, there was a big fire a dude fire that's what they called it the dude fire and it came within one mile of our cabin and at like three o'clock in the morning we got evacuated and you're shoving kids into the car and what have you we were fortunate because that was like our summer cabin so we just came back to you know cave creek to, to our main house and, and then, you know, finished up our summer here. But yeah, it came within one mile and it was scary and it was uncertain. And, you know, you're outside in the daytime and the ash was 
falling on us like snow and it, and it was really scary so just know that i'm thinking about you if you're being impacted by the smoke um and not in the direct line of the fire you know stay inside close your windows close the flue to your fireplace um you you may have forgotten to close it you know since we're not having fires anymore i forgot to close mine until just a few days ago didn't even think about it until i was dusting I'm like, why is it so hot over here um close the flue to your fireplace if you have breathing problems make sure you have your rescue inhaler maybe a backup you know be crazy but not dangerous anyhow i'm praying for you all and that it all works out it's just dreadful and the wildfires they are just a destructive force so thinking about you you know everybody take care know you're in my prayers and uh yeah let's just be careful this fire season okay i'm gonna go ahead and heat up my oil i am going to turn my electric skillet to about 330 degrees i'm gonna go ahead and pop the lid on there we go yay hooray this should be ready in less than five six minutes because this puppy heats up fast that's what we want my oil is a little bit shimmery it's not smoking and i think it is oh yeah yep that's ready okay here we go all right put that down there i'm going to try to do this so that i have one clean hand to answer the door answer the phone you know whatever needs to be done so with my right hand i'm going to go ahead and put my first cutlet into the flour going to shake off any excess. I'm going to make sure that I get the sides and any excess. And I'm going to go ahead and lay this down into the egg mixture. Making sure I get it well coated. And then into my seasoned breadcrumbs. Now I'm not going to push my breadcrumbs into it. I'm just going to kind of, yeah, just kind of back and forth, making sure I've got all the sides coated so that it is delicious all the way around. I only do a single dip on these, shake off any excess, and then right into the pan there we go and then i will just do the same for each one of these cutlets my schnitzels my schweine schnitzels egg And then into the breadcrumbs. And I know you're thinking, that's a lot of cutlets for two people. Well, yeah, you know, it is. It's a lot of schnitzel for two people, but I am thinking, um, I'm thinking schnitzel sandwiches tomorrow for lunch. Uh, I got some, you know, may maybe sliced up on top of a salad over the weekend. Because I will probably have one of these and then the fries and the cabbage. Andrew will probably have two. And then they will make a really good um, sandwich. They will be delicious cut up on top of a salad. And so, even though there are seven portions in here, you know, we'll, eat them. we'll eat them over the next couple of days. That's a great summer strategy. Cook once, you know, and eat for two or three days. Just nuke them up in the microwave, put them in the easy bake oven. If you have an air fryer, I bet they would reheat beautifully in there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna do the rest of these. This hand's still clean. I'm holding it behind my back um, to keep it that way because you got to have, you've got to, inevitably, 
somebody will knock on my door if I have dirty hands. Or the phone will ring and I have dirty hands. Okay, well, they're doing what they're doing. I do not save this. Um, because I have rolled potentially hazardous products in it. Egg, raw meat. This is about, you know, 10 cents worth of flour. And I'm going to pitch it. Now, what you could do, and what I often do, is knowing that I may have excess flour, um, I might cut up an onion, go ahead and roll it into that egg mixture, then roll it into here and make onion rings with it. And that would be delicious and a delicious little add-on to your um, schnitzel dinner. I'm not doing that tonight because we're having the fries. But I will pitch this because this is about 10 cents worth. A trip to the emergency room, at least 1200 bucks where I live. Okay, so for my first schnitzel, they are ready to come out. They are golden brown and delicious. Cooked all the way through. I tested them with a thermometer and they were reaching um, about 170 degrees so they are perfectly safe and come on I'm gonna get that one just a few more minutes so while these are hanging out while these lovely little babies are hanging out I am going to go ahead and salt them quite literally because while those are hot, they're going to absorb that salt and they are going to be well seasoned. And that is why I did not salt and season my breadcrumbs, knowing that I was going to go ahead and add salt at the finish. So salt and pepper on the pork cutlets, salt and pepper in the flour mixture, but the top just gets seasoned at the end at my house. Take this one out. little salt right on there. Yeah. All right, baby. You gotta hustle your bustle. Make your milk. Okay. All right, my last few cutlets, my schnitzels are just about done. We're making our milk. Getting ready for the Jeopardy. Okay. So this is Andrew's plate. Looks super yummy and delicious. Got the schnitzel. We've got the cream sauce. Yes, I know it's not Asian, but these were the ramekins that seemed like they would fit the best. Got a little bit of the um, lemon here. And these are crispy and delicious. He's getting his milk already. We're almost there. Oh, I forgot the cabbage. A hole here. This is how my braised cabbage turned out. All brown and delicious. That braising sauce um, reduced nicely. And that's just gonna add a little something to our braised cabbage. It would be delicious. And we're just gonna go ahead and put that in the little side bowl here. Get our veg on. All right, there we go. A little braised cabbage, a little schnitzel, and some home frites. A little um, creamy sauce, spicy creamy sauce. It's a jalapeno uh, cream artichoke cream sauce. Yay, hooray. All right, schnitzel. It's what's for dinner with braised cabbage. I'm excited. Gotta go. Gotta go kick his butt at Jeopardy. Be good, be careful, look both ways. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.